Alright guys, so I guess the time has come for us to talk a little bit about a high availability um, inside a Zabbix. Uh, first of all, if you want to see uh, like how to configuration, uh, some steps and actual commands that you need to execute on your servers, uh, that you could just copy paste from my video and apply it to your uh, production development, whatever else instance, this video will not be like it so if you are here after the commands uh, and don't want to hear the theory part then don't worry you can easily just stop the video close and start uh, doing something else uh, for months and and even for years people have asked to please create a video how you can configure a high availability i did not do that and uh, i'm still like quite sure that i won't do that um, and the reason is pretty simple, like not that I don't want to tell you how to do that. Uh, simply, it is really not the easiest task um, that you can do. Like if we, we can simply not compare this to the configuration of some items or installation of the Zabbix server database, partitioning, proxy, it is much, much more complicated. And besides of that, there is no one single, uh, let's say, golden standard that you can create, uh, which then can be taken and applied to all of the possible instances that you might have because there are so many ifs uh, so many scenarios let's say if you have uh, you know that Zabbix has three components the server front and it and the database uh, you can have each of these components installed on the separate machines so server for the Zabbix server uh, server for the front and server for the database you can create a high availability setup for such architecture at the same time you can have all of the three components listed on the single server. Still, you can create kind of high availability, but the configuration will be absolutely different. Um, if you have MySQL and a Postgres, it will be absolutely different. If your uh, Zabbix components are installed on the virtual machines that are hosted in AWS, it will be absolutely different uh, from the case if you are running your virtual machines in the VMware, which will be absolutely different from the case if you're running the uh servers on a physical boxes if you have uh, let's say one node on data center one and a second node in the data center two again the setup will be different so long story short i i don't want to create a video with the commands where i actually configured the high availability on my virtual machines on my standalone computer because you will simply not be able to take and apply to your instance and even if that will work uh, let's say initially you will do the copy pasting and voila it, it just works it won't be high available it's just it will corrupt crash uh, your Zabbix won't be reachable some problems will arise and trust me you won't be very happy so the result will be even lower availability than with a standalone instance so uh, all right let, let's get started a little bit about a theory uh, what is high availability? So when we are talking about uh, the simple, um, let's say not high availability, what we think is, uh, again, a couple of op options. We'll take the brush black, so we might have a, a Zabbix server here, and we might have a front end and a database. And all of these three are running on the separate boxes, right? This would be like more production ready uh, approach. So Zabbix server is uh, communicating with the database, uh, vice versa, and the front end is communicating with the database. And the front end is also talking a little bit with a Zabbix server. Uh, the thing is like, okay, we have a three server, so um, we might think that we are safe, but the problem is that if at least one of these components dies, all our Zabbix instance is down. So this, we could call this our um, Zabbix instance, right? And if any of these components dies, let's say front end goes down, that's it. 
our Sabix instance is not functional anymore. Like uh, people cannot see the uh, graphs, dashboards, they cannot configure new items and triggers. If our database dies, it's, it's even worse. Like at this point, front end is reachable, but it will not work because it cannot establish the connection to the database. If uh, database is down, also Zabbix server won't be able to operate. Like yes, it can collect the data from the hosts, but there is no place where to put this data. And at the same time, it is also not able to process the data uh, with the triggers because all of the configuration is in the database. So long story short, it is down. So this is uh, a simple installation, not a high availability. And what a high availability looks like. So we could call this uh, just HA. Um, right, uh, brush. And again, we can have a Zabbix server. And we would have a front end. And we would have a database, right? So just like we had before, but in this case, we have everything by two. We have two Zabbix servers, we have two front ends, and we have a two databases. So uh, then also about the high availability, um, high availability types. So it can be active, active, which means that um, let's call this uh, node 2 and this node 1. And active active means that all of these are active at the same time. So it means that we would have a Zabbix server running. This one also would be running. We would have a two front ends um, where we would probably have some load balancing IP and that would balance the traffic between two nodes. We have two databases also up and running. Um, listen carefully, Zabbix does not support active, active, high availability. It is strongly not recommended, not suggested to have two servers up and running uh, at the same time. So I will just take uh, my brush and uh, this. Don't do that. Never try to start two Zabbix servers at the same time and point them to uh, option one, one single database. And these are two Zabbix servers working. Option two, if you have, let's say, uh, master master replication between the database nodes uh, like this. Never do that. What will happen? You will just corrupt your database. Um, that's the most realistic scenario. Like, um, also the first thing that you will notice is, um, let's say the problem happens, right? Okay, we're monitoring something, there is a host, uh, somewhere we receive a data, uh, this data fires a trigger, so a new event is created here. What happens? This Sabic server sees that, oh, there's a new event, and it sends an action. But this event is also replicated to this node, so this Zabbix server is also running, right? It is connects to this node and like, oh, there's a new event and I need to send an action. What it does, sends an action. Zabbix cannot work with the two servers up and running at the same time. You will receive duplicate notifications. You will get a lot of query fail duplicate entry in the Zabbix server log. Um, in the end, you can really break the consistency of the database, which can leave like... Uh, a bad, bad thing in your installation, even after you will understand what you did wrong and uh, um, let's say stop a second Zabbix server, right? So this is clear. Uh, let's draw again. So what, what is this? Uh, Zabbix server, front end, database, server one, server two, server three, uh, like this and like this. So what Zabbix does support, Zabbix does support active, passive, uh, high availability setup. I will write it here, almost spilled my coffee, uh, active, passive. Yes, this is fine, this is supported. What it means that only one, uh, not like this, let me get the text, only one, this would be active, this would be passive. I'm talking about a Zabbix servers. This is fine. So 
remember that there must be some kind of mechanism that actually will uh, determine which node should be active at this time, right? So if this one is active, this one is passive, um, this node, let's say all of this setup is sleeping right now. It is a failover and this one is active. So this is working and when something happens with this server, it crashes, it restarts, uh, the network is gone or, or something else, um, our internal mechanism must notice that this server is down so it will be killed and this one will become an active one and the server will continue to run. The service, monitoring service, Zabbix service will continue to run. But there must be a mechanism, uh, the service that will do that automatically. Again, please don't install uh, separate uh, nodes, separate servers where one is inactive and second is a passive and uh, think like, okay, when something will happen with a node one, I will manually log into the server, uh, stop it and start the second node. Please don't do that. Eventually, sooner or later, you will do some mistake and the result will be that both nodes will be up and running and you will have all the problems I mentioned it a couple of minutes ago. Um, just one of the most common examples is that you have uh, uh, service enabled. So after the restart of the machine, uh, the Zabbix starts automatically. Let's say you've manually uh, run this. So one node is active, second is uh, passive. Then there is some patching on this server. Uh, it is restarted and Zabbix server starts. And there is no internal mechanism that can determine that and stop it before the bad consequences. And just uh, you start to receive duplicate notifications and queries starting to fail, um, full of the errors in the log so which is not good so what is uh, the mechanism that uh, works here uh, most commonly it is PCS pacemaker Curasync. so this is uh, a list a setup of native Linux utilities for high availability and what I have here is uh, clusters from the scratch, pacemaker, cluster labs, documentation. Uh, this is must read for you and honestly saying it has all the information required for you to successfully configure uh, Zabbix in a high availability but you really need to read through it carefully. And a second resource is in the Zabbix.org uh, high availability setup on the CentOS 6 I believe this one, no, not this one, sorry. Uh, high availability, yeah, this one. So this is a high availability setup for the Zabbix 1.82.4. Yes, it is on the old versions. Yes, it is uh, on the old operating system, but the logic remains the same. So take this cluster labs plus Take this uh, old, good old written documentation how to configure high availability with a Zabbix plus take all that we're talking right now in the video and uh, try to reproduce it in your lab environment. Like it's not the easiest task but it's also not, um, not that hard to configure. Alright, so we know that we have a PCS, Pacemaker and Carasync that are responsible for our high availability. Um, I will delete this but uh, so keep in mind that I'm talking about these three components. They're not native components in the Linux, you can just install them via uh, yum install and do the configuration. So how this is happening? Um, here, like, I even think we can add a resource, so there will be an example. So PCS resource standards, uh, resource create cluster IP. So we are adding the resources. What is the resource in our case? Zabbix server is a resource. The front end, maybe Apache or Nginx, it is a resource and a database. It is also a resource, right? And uh, our utilities are responsible to determine which uh, node is up and running at the time. And this is happening based on the system D. So 
this constantly monitors, uh, let's say, both of these nodes, this and this. Let me do it with a brush. And it sees that this one is active, this one is passive. If, based on the system D, this one node is done, I mean, uh, again, I almost spilled my coffee. Um, I mean, not running, then Pacemaker will notice that and automatically do the failover to this one. And this will become active, right? So, at this moment, we're talking only about a Zabbix server. Don't think about the front and don't think about a database. So, uh, let's think how uh, and what actually will be happening with our hosts, right? Because... Uh, our proxies, which is absolutely a separate story, uh, our agents, um, all of the monitored hosts are configured to IP address, right? IP address of our Zabbix server. And normally, like this Zabbix server and this Zabbix server will have uh, separate IP addresses because those are two separate servers. So to, let's say, fix this problem, we use a virtual IP. Virtual IP... Uh, which comes in a hand with um, Zabbix server. These are two resources. Two resources that are required for uh, the Zabbix server to function in a high availability. So let's say when this node is active, this one. Uh, IP address is a virtual IP address. All of our hosts are connected to the virtual IP address, not to IP of the physical or virtual machine. And our pacemaker also sees that the Zabbix server is up and running. Uh, what happens when the failover happens? So we see that this node is down. What happens is this virtual IP is moved from node 1 to node 2. This goes to the passive mode, so it stops. Virtual IP is moved to the node 2. Uh, pacemaker makes this active one. So Zabbix server gets started here. IP remains the same. And all of our hosts are still connecting here. And uh, going to the Zabbix server, which in this case functions properly. Alright, so a couple of things again. Like if this doesn't work. So this was active, uh, then something happened with it and it doesn't work. So uh, high availability setup made this one active. The problem is we never, um, our high availability setup simply cannot know whether this node is actually down. Maybe there was a problem with it. Uh, it restarted or uh, it started to work afterwards, after like one hour, or uh, there was some communication problem because uh, these nodes are speaking to each other, right? The, the high availability utilities are installed on each of them, on node 1 and on node 2, and they're talking with, with each other, and node 2 connects to node 1 to check whether the Zabbix server is up and running. Node 1 connects to the node 2, uh, whether to check if Zabbix server is running. So if something happens, we might get the case that the failover happened and after three hours, the node which was down now is up again. And we again have a scenario where we have two nodes up and running, which is not supported by the Zabbix, which is very bad, which will have a bad consequences. So what is, uh, let's say, a protection from it? And the protection is, I will make it like this, so it's actually a little bit uh, separate group, it's the fencing. And fencing will be again described here, most likely, uh, in the cluster labs. Yep, fencing. So what it is, um, it is a way how we can make sure that if uh, we think that this node is not working, then we'll, we will kill it once and for all. So fencing, the most common uh, operation for the fencing is to send a node to the restart. And remember that resources on our um, servers are managed by our high availability. We don't use a system CTL start Zabbix server. We don't use service Zabbix server start. Uh, we don't enable the auto start of our services. If it will be required to start a Zabbix server. It will be done by our high availability 
uh, services, not manually, not by systemd. So what happens is, um, let me move this, so this is active, this is passive. If this breaks, our virtual IP is moved to the second node, the Zabbix server is started on a second node, and to make sure that this node will not get up and running after like 10, 20, 1 hour or, or so, uh, our high availability utilities will send this node to the restart. Then, uh, how that actually happens? Uh, let me see if I can do like, yeah, I can. So, like this, right? Same setup. How is that actually happening? So, um, these servers must be installed somewhere and uh, well it works absolutely fine on the physical servers but let's be honest like mostly everything is virtualized right now so most likely these servers will be on uh, let's say vmware which is uh, probably the easiest option and uh, in the vmware those are two virtual machines or uh, six virtual machines. That would be again the most common. So if this would be Zabbix server separate box, front and separate box, database separate box, same here. Then it would be a VM1, VM2, VM3, uh, 4, 5, 6 inside the VMware. Here we have our HA, uh, I will write it just easier, PCS. So if it notices that this node is down it's broken this one it's completely corrupted and we started the zabbix server out automatically here the failover happened we need to restart this node how we can do that no pcs will not try to connect to this node directly because maybe the problem is uh, with the connection what our fencing will do fencing will use a soap api to connect to the VMware, it will use the virtual machine UID that you will define when you will be configuring a fencing and it will send a virtual machine to the restart through the VMware interface, through the VMware SOAP API. And again, this step, the configuration of the fencing will be absolutely different if you have VMware, AWS, Azure, uh, Google Cloud, uh, physical machines, it will differ. The good thing is that fencing scripts it's, it's a script. It's a script that you have to configure inside your cluster configuration. Uh, those are available uh, from the repository, so you don't have to invent them. Uh, if um, I can tell you for sure the case with the CentOS, uh, yum search, uh, fencing, and you will see a lot of the scripts. A thing is that also sometimes you need to do the modifications to those scripts. That's again one of the options why I am not creating like how-to uh, video with all the commands because on one system it will run like from the scratch after you install it. On the second system it will require a modifications. As example, the last I remember, if your VMware is using a self-signed certificates, uh, you have to do a little modification to the fencing script uh, for it to function properly. So, a quick recap, right? Active passive only, the virtual IP to which all of our hosts and, and, and uh, proxies are connected, Zabbix server is managed by high availability, we have a fencing that when the node will go down, we will use the fencing with the VMware uh, SOAP API to send virtual machine to the restart to actually make sure that Zabbix server will not start. Um, another important thing, uh, let me try to clean this a little bit so I will do it uh, like this so one two three uh, let's call it Zabbix uh, front end database then I will copy this like this so this is again um, active passive setup and uh, I told you that here we have uh, actually on each we have a PCS, Curasync, and a Pacemaker. Like this, and uh, we also have it here. And again, I made it a little bit too big, so let me try to make it smaller. 
yeah like this and uh, all of it is running inside the virtual machine uh, inside the VMware so we do have uh, virtual machine one two three one two three uh, which is also operated by fencing right uh, we're still talking in the perspective only of the Zabbix server uh, think that these components they are communicating with each other they are installed on each of the servers so actually um, how I could make it more visible so this set of utilities is installed on each server where you have a cluster up and running same applies for these it's running here it's running here it's running here we talked all of this video which already is thing running for like 20 minutes uh, about high availability with the two nodes but the problem is two nodes is not a quorum uh, but it's most popular high availability setup uh, mostly because the price performance if we have a standalone installation we have to pay for three servers if we have a high availability with the two nodes we have to pay for six servers if we want to have a quorum we have to pay for nine servers and normally we don't want to do that but what is the risk all of the uh, high availability setup is the service running is the virtual IP functional is the cluster uh, fine is determined between this connection remember that fencing goes directly to the VMware uh, cluster communicates between the virtual machines so there is connection here like this um, also here between the virtual machines and if we're talking about a cross data center high availability so this would be the DC1 and this would be the DC2 what is usually the problem the network communication between the data centers is not the best right and if something happens with the network communication and this link is broken our uh, let's say node 1 of the Zabbix server cannot see the node 2 simply because the network is down our high availability will not know that the problem is the network it will think that this node has died and what will happen our fencing will use the SOAP API to restart this node which will be this one simply because this link between the nodes is down what will happen this node is sent to the restart it is started after let's say two five minutes uh, the cluster services starts and first thing that they do they will try to check what's the status of the second node so this one but again the network is still not fixed so the connection is not successful we cannot see the state of this, this node and what our high availability thinks that this node is broken so it's not running and it will again try to fix it by using a VMware SOAP API and restarting this virtual machine and the problem is this, this will happen like forever constantly without a delay this virtual machine will get restarted it will try to check this host network is broken it thinks that it is not running but the network is still functioning to the VMware right it's it's like a local host so it will again use the VMware and again send it to the restart it will happen to the loop without a stop and this behavior is called a split brain in a high availability and the only proper way to um, face this problem and eliminate this problem is first of all having a quorum so when you have at least three nodes uh, second thing the connection must be let's say the best between the nodes there must be no network issues this is a very high requirement for high availability setup if you have a poor connection here better think about some other options okay i think we still have to we have to move on right um i will again delete this and uh, let me again do the drawing so like this 
uh, where is the text? So Zabbix front end database. The next part will be a little bit easier and shorter. So stay up. Um, this part, Zabbix server. I think we already covered uh, most of the important things here. What is next is front end. Remember that we talked that Zabbix server works as active passive only. This is not really about the front end case. Front end where you have Apache or Engine X uh, to serve the Zabbix front end, which again has to be configured as uh, a resource inside a high availability. Um, which will be managed, but the thing is, the front end can be active active, and you don't need to have a virtual IP here. So then we might think, like, let me actually delete the Zabbix server at all. We won't get where will we get? No, we won't get back to it. Um, so when we have this setup, so two front ends. Active, active. So let's think what will be the IP address to which I will be connecting, right? Uh, will it be the IP address of this server or this one? Or will I again have a virtual IP floating between the nodes? Uh, normally, what you do have is a load balancer. A load balancer, which is configured uh, somewhere in the outside, may it be the AWS, Azure, VM, or whatever else, which does the job. And load balancing should yeah do its job so balance the load between two active active front ends uh, and all of the users that are using our uh, web front end will be connecting to the load balancer and the load balancer will be distributing the load uh, here or here only important thing is that inside the load balancer you must enable session persistence which means that if our user uh, Johnny somebody um, connects to the load balancer and gets directed to the node 1 he must remain on the node 1 of the front end until the end of his session. So you don't want to get a behavior when let's say you go to the configuration hosts, you're navigated to this front end, then you click a create a new host and you move to this one, then you actually update a host and you again get moved to this one. So session persistence. If your session is navigated to the front end one, you must remain on this front end one forever. What else? Um, that's actually about it about the front end. Of course, th this is open choice. If you don't want to have them high, uh, active active with a load balancer, you can still create them as active passive. Then uh, you might have a load balancer that will be just running HTTP check on your front end, checking for some page. And let's say this is working, this is down. So all of the traffic will be sent here. And load balancing will do this check like constantly every 5, 10 seconds that's configurable. Um, then let's say it determines that this node is do down. So it's minus here and it becomes a plus here. And all the traffic gets forwarded to here. In the front end configuration, remember we have to specify the IP of the Zavik server, but here uh, we have two nodes, so which one should we specify? Remember that we had a virtual IP which is floating between the Zabbix servers. So in the front end for the IP location of the Zabbix server, you need to uh, specify the virtual IP. Done. Um, I think that's it that I wanted to tell about the front end. Then a database, uh, which is, uh, I guess, one of the most complicated things. And uh, Again, there are multiple ways how you can do that. Uh, you can create it as uh, master slave. So this would be uh, master and uh, this would be slave. In that case, let me try to, I know how can I uh, make it a little bit cleaner. Yep, so like this. And uh, I will also add uh, yeah, okay, let me be red. This does work. Uh, like this. 
I didn't like this. The only thing is that it's gonna be Zabbix server and this also be the server. So uh, database, if this becomes, if this is active, so master and this is uh, passive, slave, uh, read only, then all of the front end and the server must be navigated to the active one, right? Front end and the server to this one, because this is read only, it's not gonna work. Uh, then let's think about the failover. The failover happens, so this becomes active, it becomes uh, read and write, but it has a different IP address. So for us to not manually change the configuration of the Zabbix server and a frontend to use this one, what you can do is again uh, use a virtual IP floating address between these two nodes. The one which will be active will use the address and uh, the server and the front end is connected to the virtual IP. This is not the most common setup. The most common setup uh, would be the master master replication, uh, which means master master, which means that uh, this node one is replicating to node two and at the same time the node two is replicated to node one so it's a master master setup and you can achieve this with a multiple ways again one of the reasons why i don't want to create like a full how to uh, configuration with the commands you can use uh, mysql inodb cluster uh, you can use a simple gtid replication you can use uh, uh, per Kana cluster, you can use a Galera cluster. Um, absolutely up to you. So no recommendations here, honestly saying. And uh, again, honestly saying, a database, if it is running as a master master, uh, replicated from each others, there is no need to add a database servers to high availability clusters. It is okay for these two servers to run outside of the cluster. Uh, server one would be connected to database one. Front end one would be connected to database one and server two to the database two, front end two to the database two. So what happens if our Zabbix server is active it reports to this database and all the data is also replicated to the second node, which is just a standby right now. Frontend is active active. Uh, so connections are going to both nodes, which are um, visualizing and also the saving data in each separate database. And it is also replicated between the nodes. When the failover happens, so this dies and this becomes active, it is connecting to this one and writing all the history data, which again is replicated to the node one. So no need for the cluster, no need for the virtual IP, um, no need to add the database as a resource. It's just configure a master master replication and use a separate database nodes inside a configuration of the front end and inside a configuration of the Zabbix server. Done. Uh, last story. Uh, I will delete this uh, and again three beautiful squares and how come this becomes so small? Let's make this uh, Zabbix server frontend db and proxy and we will make a square here uh, and we need to do like this is it possible to have a high availability proxy setup? Um, yes. Is it easy? No. Uh, are there pitfalls? Yes, there are. So still the setup remains the same. You need a PCS, Pacemaker, Carasync. Uh, you need to add, uh, create a cluster. You need to add the proxy services as uh, resources. What may happen and what you need to keep in mind? First of all, uh, proxies, two separate boxes, and let's say we have uh, servers here, 
which are connected to mm, to the proxy one right and how the failover will happen so if this proxy is down how can I send my uh, my agents to the proxy too so again you need to use a virtual IP address that's one of the ways right uh, the virtual IP that will move uh, between the proxies so one VIP on the proxy pair what about the Zabbix servers like you know that inside the front end uh, you specify that this host is monitored by proxy A uh, that host is monitored by proxy 2 and also in the administration proxies you need to add the proxies the thing is that despite the fact that you have two nodes you don't have to add two separate proxies in the front end the only uh, determining way how the Zabbix uh, talks with the proxies and determines which one is one uh, is by the proxy name in administration proxies and the name in high availability is exactly the same for both setups so in the front end you create one proxy same name as these two the config files here is exactly the same and uh, what will happen these will be active active right so let's say this one is active it is reporting to the front end which host name uh, not the host name the proxy name matches everything is fine data is coming in this proxy dies VIP is moved to this proxy so all of my hosts are navigated to this proxy it becomes active it connects to the front end well actually to the server but we can see the data in the front end that's why the front end uh, it says my name is the proxy the server checks yes I have a proxy with the name proxy everything is fine the problem the biggest problem so when the failover happens uh, you know the proxy has a database with data unsent, right? If the data was not sent to the server, it's kept as a backlog inside the database. And as soon as the problem is fixed, um, the data is sent. So let's say this is our backlog. And uh, some issues started to appear and it started to fill up with the data. But then unfortunately the proxy died completely. So it's dead. And our high availability switch the active node to the second node which started to report the data without any issues like it's functioning our hosts are monitored but this node which is dead still has this backlog and the biggest problem is when the second failover will happen this one will die uh, VIP will again be moved here and uh, this one will become active yes it will continue to monitor our hosts and report them to the proxy but the biggest problem is that it will also send all the backlog to the Zabbix server which will be old data it's already like could be days old and we don't actually need it it can trigger the problems that happened two days ago week ago or even month ago which will basically create a false positives, which of course is not good. Uh, there is only one way to fix it. You need to kill, uh, not to kill, sorry. Uh, you need to clean related proxy tables. So if we have uh, proxy one, proxy two, so one and two, there are tables, proxy history and IDS. So before starting the service truncate table proxy history truncate table IDS system not the system CT I'll just start proxy this is the thing that you have to do before starting the proxy how you can do that there are the system D startup scripts in which you can type the pre exec that will mean that uh, before actually starting the proxy service it will execute this commands to clean the backlog that might be there from the previous time the proxy was running and then there will be no issues that's the way if you are using let's say the mysql uh, for this high availability setup sqlite is 
a little bit better because remember SQLite is one file database and instead of just connecting to the MySQL and cleaning uh, some tables before the start you can simply delete that file from your file system and uh, also the benefit of the SQLite is that proxy creates a database automatically upon the start if it doesn't exist so all we need is delete the database file and uh, when you will start the proxy it will create it automatically there won't be any backlog and you will continue to monitor your hosts and send the data to the Zabbix server and not the front and I don't know why all the time I drowned it to the front end um, right that's about it I don't know guys this video was like I think this will be the longest video in my channel um, I hope that you teach learned something uh, I hope that um, you really listen till the end because this is quite a valuable information and yes I am not telling and showing the commands how to do things I can help you with some um, let's say uh, separate steps if you want to know uh, how to like add a resource or something and you read through this and you still are failing and you're googling and you're still failing then just ask in the comments uh, I will try to help you but don't expect from me like full high availability uh, setup template that you would be able to apply to your um, environment right uh, I will post these links with a Zavix org and a clusters from the scratch in the description just like usual uh, just like usual you can write your comments with a questions suggestions feedbacks and stuff like that uh, just like usual I am asking you to click that like button and uh, also subscribe to the channel for the uh, future videos and we're definitely see you later in the upcoming videos so thank you for being here thank you for being so supportive and have a good weekend guys and yeah goodbye